No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation, and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let Safari Season take you there. We came up here this morning and she was the first animal we saw. So um, it's, a, it's a good harvest out of the herd, 10 year old female. She's probably near the end of her breeding stages. And uh, if it was an animal that, uh, that the local hunting community wanted to take out of the herd. So uh, we're very happy and uh, we're uh, just really excited. Been a great hunt. After the successful hunting of the Balkan Chamois, we would follow the American hunter in his hunting attempt to shoot down a big red stag. The hunting application that every hunter who goes hunting in Bulgaria should fill in before the hunting contains lots of information. But the most important one is the approximate size of the desired trophy. Duran had put down in his application the trophy could be without limitations. Without an upper limit, meaning we would attend an exceptionally rare hunting of huge trophy animals what Bulgaria became famous for in the last 50 years. Let us remind the ignorant ones that in Bulgaria, the world record of red stag trophy got shot down with an evaluation of 273.6 points under CIC and a weight of 16.2 kilograms. The country has 15 trophies with an evaluation that exceeds 250 points under CIC. 10 of the first 20 trophies in the world are Bulgarian. Normally, we could see the trophy animals whose horns weigh from 7 to 14 kilograms, but in several years' time, some lucky guy encounters larger animals. Daron would like to be among these lucky guys, and he will try shooting down a red stag whose antlers weigh around 14 kilos. This is the upper realistic borderline of the trophies acquired in that hunting territory but one could never be sure whether a larger trophy would show up. At only 30 kilometers away from here, the current world record got shot down. We could not believe our luck. On the very first hunting day, we encounter the red deer that weighs almost 13 kilos. The trophy is great, and Daron is full of burning passion and desire to shoot the great trophy animal down. The hunter's doubts are only about whether he would not be able to find a larger trophy animal. The thick and massive antlers show the animal is very old, but the upper spikes are not among the longest. This accelerates the hunter and hunting guide's doubt, and the deer is left in peace to take a look at us.
Attracted by the bass roar coming from the forest somewhere behind us, the deer is ready to approach further the suspicious shadows in front of it. After we didn't provide a worthy reply to its calling for a duel, the noble animal decided we were not worthy opponents, turned its back and moved away in a majestic manner. A boar pack appears from the forest. While following the distant deer roaring, we were hoping to find some mating grounds with large trophy animals, but wild boars showed up on our path. We didn't have much choice. We either had to wait for the boars to move away by themselves or we had to give up on the direction in which we were going. The wind was favorable, but should we scare the boars, they were going to head straight towards the deer and stalking it would have turned impossible. The slight wind gusts were carrying us straight towards the typical wold boar smell. They could neither sense our presence nor see us nor smell us, so we patiently waited for them to pass us by. Our patience was almost running out after we'd been watching for a quarter of an hour the boars carefully checking out each centimeter of leaves fallen on the ground for acorns or for truffles. The region in which we'd been hunting was famous for the abundant truffle quantities. Except for their eyesight, their senses are very well developed. Thanks to its sense of smell, the wild boar has earned itself the image of the best truffle searcher in Italy and France. The wild boar body is elongated and slightly flattened laterally so that it could sneak through the thickly interwoven forest shrubs. In view of its geographic location, the type and weight of the animals, whereas in Italy the species goes up to 80 to 100 kilograms, in the countries of Eastern Europe and Asia some animals exceed 300 kilograms. Their continuously growing tusks serve them as weapon and instrument for digging out food. The lower teeth of the adult animals are around 20 centimeters long, but trophies have been registered with over 30 centimeters teeth that we've shown you. Not only the males are equipped with the dangerous weapon, but the elderly females as well. Even though in their case, the teeth are not that big, while following their motherly instinct, they are the most dangerous opponents. While we were waiting for the pigs to move away, the sun lifted up high and the deer withdrew deep inside the forest, and we have to follow them. We continue our march through the forest trying to define the biggest animal by the vast nuances of its roar. Tens of deer have chosen this part of the forest for their mating ground. The place where mature stags take up their chosen territory. This is the open area preferred by them in the forest habitats. Their mating calling is a fearful roar that resounds the forest for kilometers. The females move among the stags and choose their mating partner. Soon, every male makes up his harem. Most often the adult and powerful males gather groups of five to six, and sometimes of many more hinds. In normal circumstances, young deer are not allowed to mate. They get chased away from the mating grounds even before the females start choosing their partners. The youth go around the mating grounds, try to starting duels, and get chased away by the experienced fighters with thunder-like roar and threatening plowing with antlers. This happens every year until a youth gets old enough and piles up enough muscle mass and more deviations of their antlers to be able to win over the old stag and conquer its harem. Mating fights are unforgettable sight and the hunters that witness some of them keep telling about them for years. At present, we were not that lucky. The fights, should there be such today, 
were happening somewhere else. Only the chased young stags were making it to us. The animals were obviously unexperienced and quite frightened. Some of the locations attracting the stags are the cornfields with sunflowers. The high stems were entirely covering the wild animals from unwanted looks, and the sunflower heads full of seeds were good food stock. A pheasant with its cries showed us the location from where it got chased away by the deer. We decided to carefully approach the forest where the animal was supposed to be hiding after it almost stamped the blatant birds. Acquiring a 13 to 14 kilo deer is not an easy thing to do. Such a nice trophy was a great challenge and honor to the hunter and the hunting guide. Such an animal had spent at least 10 to 12 years in the forest under the constant menace presented by poachers' weapons. For sure, this animal was supposed to be experienced enough to avoid most threats, but we were hoping it would not be clever and careful enough to avoid us.
The days were dragging and the active mating period was approaching its end. The weather was changing as well, and from sunny and warm, it had become cool and rainy. The hunter was thinking more and more often about the missed chance he got as soon as on the first hunting day. The red deer can be seen in Europe, Asia, North Africa, and South and North America. Additionally, it got adapted in New Zealand, but there the species is genetically degenerated. In Bulgaria, in the beginning of the 30s of the past century, it got almost extinct. Only two deposits are preserved, in Star Planina and Rila. Its population was recovered by the reacclimatization means in all our mountains and the plain forests of Dobruja and Ludogorje. Usually, deer coloring is red-brownish in the summer to merge with the dried leaves that grow darker, and during the winter it is gray-brownish to be able to hide in the snow. The male changes its antlers every year, from March until the end of April. The one-year-olds have very small and very underdeveloped antlers when with one, not more than two deviations, and during the second year, they could turn to six. As they age, the antlers grow bigger, more powerful, and deviated. They achieve their maximum in the 10th year, when the deviations get to 24 or more, being the optimal age for shooting down nice trophies. When the animal starts aging, antlers' dimensions decrease. Nevertheless, their thickness increases and their mass drastically accumulates during the first one or two years after the heyday of their growth. Many European hunters believe an old and even elderly animal left with almost no deviations to be the supreme trophy. After a nearly one week search, we finally encounter once again a trophy that probably approximates the one we missed on the first hunting day here.
Autumn already has total prevalence above summer and the deer have stopped roaring. Here comes Daron's last hunting day. The chance of finding a huge trophy animal is almost zero, but hope is the last to die. The roebuck is disseminated in Europe and North America. One cannot see it in the northernmost parts of Scandinavia and Russia. In Bulgaria, you could see it everywhere. It inhabits the open spaces, covered with shrubs and small forests, as well as mountains to the upper forest limit. The roe deer has the richest food spectrum among all deer animals. The ones that matter the most to its natural feeding in the forest habitats are the blueberry, blackberry, and cereals. Here in the plains, the hind prefers the lucerne blocks and autumn crops where it finds sufficient, abundant, and nutritious food. The food it feeds on is mainly of forest origin, so it inflicts the greatest damage to the forest plantations, especially in the cases of overpopulated territories. The unexpected meeting at the pathway reminds us of our first hunting day and the ill-fated decision to miss that great trophy. The wild boar is an exceptionally shrewd animal. 
It's gifted with an exceptional sense of smell and sharp hearing that make it a worthy opponent of the hunter, and oftentimes the hunting chess game ends up in his favor during driven hunts, as well as during the individual hunt. It seems boars have a sixth sense of whatever human facing them is going hunting for boars or something else. As you would see in a while, the boars wait for the hunter to start moving, to decide on their escape route. Hinds mating happens during the summer, so we are outside their active season, but the frequent encounters evidence the whole region is overpopulated. The roebuck chooses some smooth meadow in the forest and marks it via rubbing its antlers and its specific smell, as well as typical mating calling. The roebuck's roar is totally different from the deer one. This is a one-time growling that is repeated at different time intervals. Hinds do not take part in harems. The female is monogamous and remains with the roebuck it has chosen. Its chosen one fertilizes it after continuous chase around some shrub, tree, or rock. The chasing goes on in ellipse and it is so long that the location gets clearly marked circles on the ground. These circles are the reason behind the occurrence of superstitions and beliefs amongst the locals and supernatural forces. They call this phenomenon wood nymph circles. Should the roebuck succeed in catching up with the female, it conquers her, and if not, she abandons it and goes looking for a stronger roebuck. This is the way natural selection works in the case of roe, without bloody mating rituals for eliminating the weak and sick animals, the way it is in the case of red deer. The day is approaching its end, and this is probably our guest's last stalking. So that he does not have to go away empty-handed, the guide allowed the hunter to take down a selection deer, an animal without the necessary trophy qualities that have to be taken out of the procreation circle. Duran wants to achieve what he had come here for in Bulgaria, in the heaven of wild gigantic red stag, and he would be our guest once again, with and in safari season. Maybe next year. Feel the excitement, feel the danger, share the adventure.